Thanks for nothing. <laughs> totally inappropriate. Yeah, definitely. Right and game. thank you for all of that for me, the, the art critic. Well, I'm really glad all you guys could make it here this afternoon. Thank you for being here. Thank the you, energy Jerry. in the room is zzz, pow, and I'm impressed with you. Uh, I love <laughs> LA. If anybody wants to give me a job, but that's good. Um, I have to bring us down just a little bit and Do, say, please. <laughs> I'm here not to talk about movies or actually just any one thing. I'm here to talk about how we all play our own instrument, how we're all writing our own letter to the world, how it's very confining to have gatekeepers, for example, call you just an actor or you're just a cartoonist, you're just a musician, you're only an illustrator. The gatekeepers keep everything kind of ordered that way. And I don't like it. We all, as Walt Whitman said, contradict ourselves. You all contain multitudes. You're a bothness, an otherness, you're everything at once, and that's why we're here to talk about Jim Carrey's drawings and paintings and wherever that leads us away from the gatekeepers. And this is important to me as an art critic. And I really started watching his drawings almost immediately in 2016 when I saw them on um, Twitter. And finally, Pain I Pain bodies to... have to point themselves at something. What? Pain bodies have yeah. to point themselves well, at something. It definitely when pointed... When we're in pain, we find... Yeah, it pointed at me. <laughs> And I want you all to see uh, all the drawings at Michelle Macaron at 300 South Mission Road. And I want to say this about that. Where they're being shown is not a hokey pokey place. It's not about cashing in. I guess somebody like Jim Carrey could show anywhere, but he picked a real gallery of a committed, loving gallerist. You had an opening a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and I wanted to talk about what I call radical vulnerability, right. meaning when you make art in another medium, you're really putting yourself out there in another way. What right. was the opening like, because you've been at a zillion of these. Uh, I feel, uh, I, don't, I don't work towards the encouragement of the crowd as much as I do myself, if I feel like I've accomplished something interesting, then I'm good and I know it's going to find somebody because we're not that different. But uh, when I walked into that room, and, and I get emotional, I was very emotional just waiting to come out here tonight because there's a, this is a, a very soft spot in my life. Art. Art. Right. Is a, is a very vulnerable, open, soft spot. Uh, and you, you lay yourself open to be criticized, ripped apart, told you should stay in your lane. Yeah. And I've never believed in lanes. I don't even believe I'm a person. So I, I <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are no lanes. I don't believe in them. I do believe that passion wins out, that there is, you know, a driving force behind artists. And the ones that are, you know, in need of expressing a feeling or a, or a, just a, a sense of what's beautiful or what's terrible, and they're driven <laughs> to distraction by it. Those are the people that I feel really compel mm -hmm. an audience. And also, I, th I believe in art as a way to bring people into presence together. Mm -hmm. You know, I truly believe that the greatest art in the world, it's like James Joyce, a portrait of an artist as a young man. He, he, he says that the greatest of art, the masterpieces, really are the, are the ones that stop you. There's nothing to say. It causes a stasis, you know, in your brain. There's no judgment to be made. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's what I'm looking forward to one day, stumbling into something, <laughs> because my heart, my soul, and my... my talent for the craft 
is in a place where they all come together and capture something that can't be described. That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm happy to throw punches all the way. And, <laughs> and at, the the op- bother me. at the opening, there you're standing around. Now your art is on the wall. I couldn't believe it. In what sense? In what, yeah, I stood in the middle of the art show and I looked around and the sheer volume of it freaked me out. Like, I did this? I said, I couldn't have done this. No, it's not possible. I sat there and I right. looked at it and I said, how did this happen? I yeah. can't do this. Right. And that's because the passion and the need and the desire behind it was bigger than me. You know? And uh, That's and what you all feeling. have to get here. That all the demons inside of you are speaking to you at 3.15. They could call his demons at 3.15 in the morning. And so you got over those demons and started working. I live with those demons. Mm-hmm. They're, they're my palette. You know, they're, they're a part of my uh, cavalcade of characters. Mm-hmm. They're everything. To me, it, there's, it's funny, this separation of arts. Uh. Because, I mean, there's, you know, there's definitely something to somebody who's grown up in the art world and learned and schooled, been schooled and knows how to mix paint and knows how to do these things and knows the history. There's something to that. But, you know, the fact is we're all sculptors in our lives, all of us. You are with what you do. You, you do it with words now, whereas you used to right. do it with pastels. And, yeah, and, I uh, failed. He, well, he wrote a, a Pulitzer Prize winning article that was so uh, self-effacing and open and honest and incredible <laughs> that... Uh, Thank you. That he bridged a gap there, and, and, and he is the bridge because he is an artist, and he understands an artist. And so uh, all he wants to do, I believe, is to, you know, is to, to allow people over that bridge, you right. know, to help people to the next level, and I, and I, I respect that. I, I loved the article. I, right, I thought thanks. it was really beautiful and honest. Thanks. And uh, I liked some of your stuff. Really? Yeah, I like yeah. some of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's all we can ever hope for, man. Uh, yeah, a little <clears throat> is a lot. That's um, right. So you're standing around. You're at the opening. What's your daily practice like in drawing and painting? Because mostly all artists, and all of you know this from your lives, what you do is happening inside of you all of the time. Yeah. And it's pr- you have a boring life Really? You're just alone? I thought it would go away when I went back to work as an actor, that I, okay, well, this energy is now going to go into the other thing, but I can't stop. If I want it to stop, I can't stop. The hard part for me is stopping, (laughs) is stopping long enough to take care of the business of my life, because once I get started, all plans go away. Uh, you know, what I was going to do with the afternoon and the other regard is, is, is completely disappeared. I'm free, and that's what it is for me. It's, a, it's presence, and yeah. freedom in presence. And I think the greatest works of art in the world are examples of an artist's absolute presence touching the canvas. It's kind of, in my mind, I go, when the brush hits the canvas, or you're sculpting clay, or whatever it is. In that moment, you're hitting the pond with a rock, and that the wave goes outward, and it doesn't stop. It goes around the world, especially now, mm-hmm. and everything. I can't you know, get right. an In-N-Out burger without it going global. So, sure. uh, <clears throat> so when I touch the canvas, if I'm there, and I'm really in love with it, then that will be love. You know, and if I want to get somebody and I want to tell people to watch out for this person and watch out for the inequities of the world and, and uh, you know, paint an example of those inequities, which I've been doing, uh, that's the wave that goes out. That's the, uh, the rock in the pond. So the definition then of art in some ways is to be able to embed thought mm-hmm. and feeling in material. You yeah. follow that? And so if the thought is outside the work, and nobody, it doesn't communicate, but your, your stuff on Twitter is actually communicating. You do an amazing thing where you combine the text mm-hmm. 
and the words, yeah. much like conceptual artists always did with their title and business sure. like that. How does that work for you? Uh, well, it was interesting because when I first started playing on Twitter, like everybody else, I just got myself in trouble all the time <coughs> because I was honest, <laughs> which is a terrible thing to be on Twitter. But, um, you know, so it was a little scary. Uh, and I became kind of an activist mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to a lot of things uh, that I was seeing. And uh, there was a lot of pressure on me from my management, from, you know, uh, people in charge to go like, don't mess this up, you know, don't, you've got great, you've got goodwill in the world, people love you, you start talking about politics or whatever issues, you're going to lose half your audience. And I say, lose them. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. If 30% of this, 37% of this country isn't willing to open their mind to what's going on and see what's right in front of them, this demon that's controlling us at this moment and his minions, then there's no helping them. And you just have to go your way and you have to say your piece and your truth and that's what I've been trying to do. But there was a, a pressure to stop. And the first thing I did which I think was really smart, was, you know, give my Twitter to one of my assistants <laughs> so that I, I wouldn't make that rash choice in the middle of the night, <laughs> like our president. Uh, <laughs> did you see him today? He called Adam I, I blissfully Sh missed him today. He called Adam Schiff, Adam Shit. Uh-huh. That's, anyway, go yeah, on. Classy. So you give Very it to classy. an assistant. Very classy, Washington. Yeah. You, you give it to an assistant. I do, but also the whole time I was trying to convince my people, this is a canvas. I don't know what to do with the canvas yet, but I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna find something to do with this canvas. Social media is a canvas for me. That's right. It, you know, and I think if it's used in that way to express the truth or whatever, and in an artistic way, uh, it's a beautiful thing, and I think it has turned into an incredibly beautiful thing, and I, I'm, I just feel so gratified, and I feel gratified that I'm here with you, and, and that you people are interested in what I have to, to do, and I'm super grateful. It seems to me, one of the, what is activism? We ask ourselves this in the art world. Activism might boil down to an artist, or all of you, you notice things, that's step one. Everybody notices what's going on in the United States all around the world right now of the devastation of our country from the inside. But an artist, and I think this is where you are definitely an artist since we have to use these labels, they notice things then they say what they noticed. Mm -hmm. Andy Warhol may not have been passionate about capital punishment Right. But he painted electric chairs right. and people being sure. killed that way. Sure. So you see and things. the things we were caught up in and, and uh, mesmerized by, which is uh, celebrity culture and products and uh, the uh, the repetitiveness of it. It's and incredible. you're drawing now every day. I, yeah. I, every I did never you draw drawing. today? I did. I, I looked did. to see if he posted anything today, but he hasn't. <laughs> Well, if you'd, uh, if you, you want to indulge me, I, I could send one out right now while we're all here. Uh, if you don't follow him, just get out of here. <laughs> and follow me as a favor. My editors will love that. Okay. okay. Jerry Saltz. Okay. I'm going to put uh, one of my assistants on uh, speakerphone here if I can. Wow. I don't know if this will pick it up. Oh, there you go. Hey, Jim. Brogan. Hey, Jim. Hey, man. Uh, fill the torpedo tube. Boom. Torpedo tube's loaded. Fire. <laughs> On the hole. Okay, let's hey, go. Hey, if you want to look at your phones uh, in the next little while, something's going to show up. I think one of the greatest, one of the greatest uh, <clears throat> enemies of our democracy uh, is the subject of this, this tweet. Let's see uh, here. Oh my God. It's him. 
It is uh, Mitch McConnell. Yeah. And, and what is the text on this well, one? There is no text on this tweet because I didn't think it was necessary just to see him in front of the blue wave and uh, uh, depicted as a as a turtle, which uh, unfortunately for him now is not protected. Uh, <laughs> turtles and reptiles and such. Uh, so uh, and also the nerve of a man who's been trying to destroy everything with compassion everything that we've tried to do that's good for this country and that we built that's beautiful in this country uh you know and made us completely non-inclusive and made us you know basically severed us in half mm -hmm. and made us hate each other yeah and uh and this man has been doing that for for eight i don't know how many years eight? many well, many years God. too many years anyway he's a, a to me a poison in our system that we have to purge he has we to do. go, and, yeah. and he has the nerve after all of it, after trying to destroy everything Barack Obama did that was good, after you know taking our health, trying to take the health care and giving two, tax breaks to the rich. And giving us two fake wars, crashing yeah. the economy with yeah. Bush. Yeah, just incredibly dangerous, a threat to homeland security. And, uh, and, uh, and now he has the nerve to come out a couple of days ago and asked for bipartisanship. Well, I'm telling you, you know, that's a nice thought. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't happy with Nancy Pelosi either when she came out with that immediately on, on winning some seats in the House. These are not people you can deal with. Mm -hmm. You cannot be bipartisan with a criminal. Mm -hmm. A rapist needs to be removed, not, you know, negotiated with. Right. These people are raping our system. They're destroying it blatantly in front of us, and they have to go. You can't deal with them. This corrupt Republican Congress that was, these, the Nunes of the world and the uh, Lindsey Grahams of the world that is just like the most two-faced person I've ever seen yeah. in my life. Yeah, hated uh, Trump. Oh and my now God, he's, he's chafed, just blowing in the wind wherever it, <laughs> wherever it blows. And, uh, you know, these people have to be removed from our system because they're bad for us. They're bad for There's, you know, Trump is a melanoma. And anybody who covers for him, including uh, Sarah Saunder Sanders, uh, is, uh, is putting makeup on it, mm -hmm. you know? But it, 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 uh, it, it shows that there's a deeper problem in this country. I, I and have the problem to... is greed. Greed and greed and greed. And, oh, gosh, you know, African-American people might be better than us. Right. They might take over. They yeah. might, it's just fear and greed is where we're living. And uh, they want us that way. They also, you know, if you, if you notice, you know, the emphasis, de-emphasizing education, all of it, they're trying to take our consciousness from here and reduce it to this. Whatever you're told by Fox News and the National Enquirer at the, at the cashier in the supermarket, yeah. they want people to be in that zone, in that very limited zone. It's, it's misinformation. It's do you, Goebbels, man. <laughs> do you watch? I do. When I write all day, I actually have far right-wing radio on in the background. Mm -hmm. And I use it as adrenaline. Yes. And... <laughs> And a uh, note, they're always angry. When Bush was president, they were pissed off for eight years. Uh -huh. Then when Obama was president, they were pissed off. And do you watch Fox? They did everything but hang him on the frigging White House lawn. Mm -hmm. And it's sickening to me. Mm -hmm. And it sickened me. The day Aretha Franklin died, I cried. <laughs> that someone so beautiful and so incredibly conscious mm -hmm. and someone who's done so much to lift the spirit of people has to close her eyes on a world like this is a fucking injustice mm -hmm. it should not happen right i can't i can't stand it i can't take it <laughs> just so yeah. we'll yell until it's over and are you watching the yellers, the Fox News, the uh, far right wing radio? Do you get? Yeah, I, I do I too. Do you, any of you? 
Yeah. You should, I'm afraid. I dip do in, you follow? and then I burn my clothes and take a hot shower. <laughs> and do you follow the president's Twitter account? I do. Fuck no. Wow. You can't avoid it. It's a sickening. It's sickening. And have you been blocked by any of the administration uh, on Twitter? Uh, I don't think so, no. no. Okay. I, okay. I'm, you know, I'm free to do what I want to do. I don't know if I'm being listened to or... I got blocked by Donald whatever. Trump no Jr. myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gangster. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, no, that's a red badge of glory for sure. And I, I got to go back to the drawings. I told you I'm boring. Um, they're done in heat, it looks like, in, with real passion. They're, they're fast, but I have to say, the, your line is very controlled. I see that he goes back over things. You, you use whiteout very well. Is that what you're doing? <laughs> yeah. No one uses not, that shit. I'm not uh, above that, No, for it's sure. great. It's white paint, man. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> the artist always wins. Uh, and, and then you rip them out of the notebook, which is interesting. A lot of artists would get very precious yeah. and, and keep the notebook for the lack of Well, that was Michelle Macaron as, as well. Wherever you know, she, she is, I've got to give Michelle, her credit for that yeah, because yeah. she came and she, she looked at my body of work that I was uh, building and she went, I want them like this. You know, Genius. don't don't pretty them up. I, yeah. I like the rawness of just yeah. ripping it out of the pad, you know, yeah. and uh, that it is a pad in the first place. And so you <laughs> you draw every day. I do what I used to do when I was a little kid, and that was like from the you know from the age of five till ten. I spent most of my time in my room. Uh, I did go out and play, but my yeah. room was heaven to me, and that feeling of like I'm gonna. I'm going to figure out the universe in here. Yep. I'm going to do some poetry and then try to get it published by McGraw Hill Ryerson. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to get on the Carol Burnett show, so I'm doing impressions and coming up with stuff like that. Yeah. And art. And if someone interrupted my drawing when I was a child, I would have a conniption and break things mm -hmm. because I was in the womb, and it really is that for me. So during this period of time, there's a terribly negative uh, effect of these kind of people uh, and this kind of corruption and greed taking over. There's also a beautiful effect because artists come to life. Artists mm -hmm. do the greatest work of their lives when they're trying to reach people, you know? And uh, so that's a beautiful thing. And I'm right back as soon as I put a pencil on a page, yeah. I'm right back at eight years old. Yeah. I'm eight years old again. Only now I'm dealing with something really serious, but, but it, in a way that, that keeps me in my youth. Yeah. You know? Did, was there so art? I felt really gifted by it. Was there art in your life, your father or your mother? Because it seems to me there had to be. That's I don't the, know anything about his life, so. Yeah. Well, you don't Let's know Let's just about keep mine. it that way, Jer. Okay, yeah. No. Uh, no, <laughs> no the, the amazing gift of this whole thing as well is that, and pardon me if I get misty here, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, my father, who was an incredible clown, an amazing human being, who if you talked to him for five minutes, you knew him for 50 years. Mm -hmm. He was just your friend, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, he'd do anything for you. And just lovely, incredible, funny, mm -hmm. I watched him perform, and I sat back, and I went, that's a good thing to do, mm -hmm. and uh, wrapped people in our, in, a, in, our, uh, in our home every time they visited, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, they would leave with pea stains and go, Percy, <laughs> my dad's name was Percy, which makes you funny immediately, okay. uh, but they would leave going, you missed your calling, Percy, you missed your calling, and hmm. he handed me all that talent and that stuff, and that ability to perform. And that was him. And I lived with that for 30 years before this passion, this childhood passion came back, of painting, sculpting, and everything else. And, uh, and I realized one day, when right in the middle of creating something, 
that, oh my gosh, I'm with my mother now. That's it. I'm getting to spend <laughs> time with her because she, uh, she used to get up in the middle of the night and, and take these pastels out and have her private world in the middle of the night without three kids screaming at her. And, uh, and she would get lost in her little paintings of tigers and giraffes and things she'd put up in our room the next day. And it was her peaceful time and, and, uh, and she had a, a great talent for it. And, uh, and I realized that, my gosh, I get to spend, I, I'm getting the benefit of the greatest, you know, energy from both parents. Both of them gave me these incredible gifts. And so I really right. I look at it like time right. with my mother. Right. That explains a lot to me because it seems to me you've talked a lot about <clears throat> She channel. also didn't put up with any shit. Really? <laughs> no. She's not one to like parse her words. And, and did you, but it reminded me that you've talked about and tweeted about that this comes from fury, anger, pain, rage. And love for and what that's supposed what, to he be. He took my line. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, well, it's, I'm an art critic, you know. Uh, that How can you all, hate something without loving something yes, else? That's yes, better. That's it. All art, even when you're like Goya, have you ever seen Goya's painting of Saturn eating his children? It's, nothing is uglier on this it's earth. incredible. Yeah. And yet, you have to have love to make a thing. Bosch is painted with grace mm -hmm. and elegance. I have a Boschian character in one of my paintings. I don't know you if you do? noticed it. In one, of the, in one of the drawings. The drawing where, the, uh, the, where the, the Trump base is following a red hat to hell. There's a, there's a Boschian character in there, the, the plague character, yeah. Let, you want to see some of the art right now? <laughs> and I'll have, I will walk you through it. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to do this. In our criticism, it doesn't work that, this way, but can we please have an image? Here we go. I think oh. we're doing it. Now, or it's doing us. Uh, the date on this one is August 10th of this year, and what's going yeah. on there? Well, I, uh, you know, I was struck by the uh, insincerity <laughs> of uh, Mike Pence. Uh, his face is the most insincere thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> It's, it's really, truly the face of absolute insincerity. Yeah. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning to me. He's squinting his eyes like this and trying to look like he loves you. He so cares about you. It's a hospitality face. What can I do to help you? Let me hold your wallet and I'll help you out here. He is so disgusting to me, I can't believe it. And that's and, him with his overlord, yeah, Trump. That's him trying to sell us the idea of Space Force. Remember okay. that? <laughs> Not since Saturday morning cartoons, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is Space Ghost going to be there? <laughs> you know? My gosh, the Jetsons? Okay. And where did this pose come from? I think he has a real gift in his drawing for how he... Uh, I'm a bit of a director that way. You are. And, and I know because I know the proscenium when I act in front of the camera. I know... Interesting. I have a sense of... The those. square, the rect... Uh -huh. Well, the square in the, this case. The Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Conceptual. The uh, golden uh, proportions. And do... your Next image, please. Wow. Now, this is something I woke up. I saw... I can't remember exactly what the outrage was. They've all molded together. Yeah, in June, June of this year, what was going on then? Whatever, who can, who can remember, who cares? Yeah. Let's just move on. <laughs> Let's scrub and move on. Um, but yeah, I, I was struck by something, you know, him doing something about being Christian or something like that, right. and I was just sickened by it, and I just, I just you know, I, I just thought of every insulting, uh, challenging, selfish, indulgent word he says as another nail in the hand of Jesus on the cross mm -hmm. to me because it is exactly the opposite of what he was supposed to be teaching us. And, you know, whether you think he's a, a deity or a, or a teacher or whatever, or if he even existed at all, it's right. just 
bastardized so badly in this country, the Christian right is sickening to me. I think that we're going to find out when, when they eventually find out. And I don't know this to be a fact. I just believe it myself. I haven't proven it. But my instinct tells me that there are some abortions that mm. were paid for. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people who jumped in and said it was me. Uh, and uh, I think they're going to find that out. And then we'll finally know once and for all that the Christian right has never been about morality. Agreed. It's always been about holding on to power and using yes. morality to do so. Whiteness, <laughs> whiteness and power. Uh, I think that's very true. I love the touch of putting uh, the president uh, in a Roman legion. Yes. Uh, ha the very good touch and very filmic. I have to say, I can almost see... <laughs> yeah, uh, Mel Gibson would be very happy yeah. with that. <laughs> Next image, please. Now. Yeah. This, this is my Halloween photo. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> happy <drawing>. Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, but, but to me, uh, the right is a cyclops. It, is a, it sees in two dimensions. Yes. What can I have? What can I get? How can I fuck these people and get it? And to me, that's a very narrow field of vision to live in. So I depicted him as a cyclops on Halloween because, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's no perception going on there. It I think that's really perceptive because one thing that the far right has that we don't have if we are a we, and we better be, otherwise you should just leave. Uh, yeah, and stop apologizing for it or trying to be gentle yeah. about it, snowflakes. It's <laughs> like if there's enough slow snowflakes, it, it creates a blizzard, yeah. and that's what we're going to do. Kaboom. Yeah, I don't mind being a snowflake if that means, you know, they, they started calling me, you know, they, they try to turn you into something immediately and sure. label you and, and marginalize you by doing it. So as soon as I say, you know, Canadian health care is good. And I read an article yesterday somebody sent, sent to me that said that ca the Canadian doctors are actually prescribing visits to museums to see art hey. because people are stressed. Yeah. Now, that's a thoughtful thing to do, you know? And uh, so I put it out there because I'm sick and tired of hearing that that system doesn't work. I never waited for anything in my life. My mother never paid for a prescription or he an had, operation. He's Canadian. Uh, and have Canada. Canadian health care, and that's why we hate you. But we, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, but, you know, this is the thing, is the lie keeps going. And if, if, as soon as you try to help people, they call you a socialist. They mm -hmm. try to label you. So they called me a socialist because I want people to have health care, because I want somebody to be able to keep their house when their mother gets sick. You know, uh, it's just not right. This country is too, too great for that. Amen. We are too great for that. And, you know, health care is what great countries do when they fucking grow up. They do universal health care. I, we have the means. I want to say this about that. Again, the one-eyed thing, the, the one-eyed certainty of the right wing. Any issue is either right or wrong. They know for certain where our side, it's true. We believe in paradox. Yeah. We believe in the multitudes, the contradictions that we all live with all day. And we're dying to negotiate with someone reasonable. Anybody. At, yeah. Us coming out immediately, too soon, saying, let's be bipartisan. Well, <laughs> guess what? No, not with these guys. You've got to get rid of these guys. These are criminals. These are criminals, and they've got to go. Do you think this is going to be bad? Yeah. Next slide. Okay, we have to read first. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> well, yes. I'll let you read. My congratulations to the record numbers of women who rose to the challenge of restoring the balance. Also, last night a star was born, Beto O'Rourke, a smart and decent guy who very nearly turned Texas blue. There are great things in store for this budding Mr. Smith. Mm. Uh, and I love how it's And I want to say one thing, you know, I know, you know, there's a chance that Hillary might want to run again, and there's those types of things going on, and there's conflict about that. I don't think she would be a bad president. No. I have no, I, no, no problems. Uh, I believe that she knows what she's doing. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the fact that people are so conflicted about her, whether it's right or wrong, is a problem. Mm -hmm. And we'll lose votes. Yeah. And we'll lose moderates. 
in swing votes. And I'm sorry, you know, I, I would love to see him and Kamala Harris, you know? Uh, Do you I guys like that. him? I see that as something great because I think she's fantastic. I think he's a really, really incredible guy. And, uh, and I, I would really love for, you know, in this decade to be able to vote for somebody who isn't the lesser of the evils. Right. right. You know, Amen. and that's what we need this time. We cannot, we cannot put someone out there that we have to say, well, it's the lesser of the evils. No. And I'm not saying she's done anything to, to, to warrant that. No. That's the perception. And, a question, and, informal poll. Anybody here uh, like that idea of uh, Beto O'Rourke being in the very public spotlight on the national stage? I, I need to hear what he has to say. Yeah. You know, but I like his energy a lot. I like his energy a lot. And uh, I love that it's drawn in one of the Amer great American, beautiful... This Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, one yes. of my favorite movies growing up. That's Jimmy and Stewart. There man. he is, right there. You know? And no. that's him, you know, that's when Jimmy was fighting for the truth. And that's what we're doing right now. We're in that movie. Yeah. I mean, I do, you know, the, uh, every day when Trump opens his mouth, it's like they wheeled in a bunch of mail that's been faked, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. and it looks really bad sometimes. Every yeah. time you get a little, bit of, a little bit of fresh air, you know, they, they fuck it up. They taint it with some yeah. other outrageous thing. You can't, you guys it's are It's bad on, business, too. You guys are on fire, and your president is actually kind of blaming you. Yeah, that was uh, sickening. And that's a really dark thing, it seems to me, as yeah. a New Yorker. Uh, yeah. It's pretty bad news. Yeah. Terrible, terrible. Terrible way to do business. First of all, he <laughs> bankrupted everything he's ever done. Seven times he's bankrupted. He's bankrupted every business he's been involved with. What, what makes anybody in this country think he's not going to do the same to us financially, eventually, and morally? Morally, yeah. That's what he does. Next image, please. Yeah. Okay, well, speaking of... <laughs> yeah, hey, this is Hey, I didn't know this was coming next. Uh, yeah. How do These you things happen. That's so funny. Yeah. You know, you've got the trademark T on the uh, high chair right from the beginning. Hmm. He's got to label everything with that T for tit. And uh, our tyrant. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I see him this way. I see him as an underdeveloped human being who's just completely lost. And he thinks the way to do business is to come and kick you in the face and then when you pick up yourself up and go, because you're a decent person, and go like, Jesus Christ, what, the, what was that about? Then you, you know, and you start to heal, and you go, well, let's just give him another chance. He's being nice now. You know, I, I'm, I'm sickened by the fact that people are still on television, on the news, uh, saying if he could just be presidential, right. if he's a bad guy. Yeah. He's yeah. a bad guy. Yeah. He's the guy you fear. You don't want him coming into your house in the middle of the night and doing things to your woman and stealing your money. He's a bad guy. And, you know, anyway, so next, I, I see him as a child. Next slide. And, uh, and a rump. Oh, I love this one. The drawing on this one is great. It looks like a big yes. pipeline of manure <laughs> and oil. And yes. this is about, go ahead, Scott, Scott Pruitt. Pruitt. Pruitt was an incredible, like... You know, if you could be more, can you be more obviously corrupt than this man? He's just an open sore of corruption. And, and what just, was his job with the administration, or is his job? To bring the smog back to L.A. <laughs> He's uh, the to he, kill the uh, fish. Uh, what is to, it called? The Environmental Protection Agency. Yeah, him. he's a vampire, <laughs> and uh, and that's all. There's nothing good going on there at all. And, do you, and so he, he really bothered me, and uh, I needed to do whatever I could do to label that. What is the first word? I looked on Travaggio. What is that? Is that a California word? <laughs> what is it? What word? The, the, the fourth word. Oh, Travago. No, what no, is no. Travago? <laughs> Am I, 
I it's don't those, know. It's those travel commercials for oh. cheap hotels and stuff like that. And it's yeah. this really annoying guy that I, I don't know. He's the guy that like divorced his wife at uh, 60 and <laughs> went back out in the world. Uh, <laughs> Got to hit the clubs again. <laughs> Ooh. Um, you know, it so. looks to me that you, do you have any artistic, honestly, uh, people that you've looked at, like R. Crum or Doc? Crum is, uh, is interesting because I, I did not think of myself as being affected by him, but I did, uh, I did enjoy his work very much. You it did. It was extreme and incredible, but honest beyond yeah. belief, and maybe sick, but I've, I have no idea. Well, that's the thing about radical vulnerability, which yeah. is what drew me to your work. Right. We show our darker selves, the sick yeah. stuff. The stuff that you have inside of you all day, you yeah. too, you yeah, too, yeah. and you put it out there for all to see. R. Crumb did it in the 1960s in uh, cartoons. You, you know, they keep them. on trucking cartoon and all that stuff, the Grateful Dead stuff mm -hmm. and all of that. He's just a fantastic stylist and incredible. And, and I got to tell you an R. Crumb story that uh, just flipped me out because uh, a couple of uh, a couple of months ago, somebody, a friend, sent an article about R. Crumb that he had, that I was in his life, uh, and that uh, 15 years uh, before, he had dreamt about me on like The Tonight Show. Wow. And I was doing stand-up comedy in his dream, and it wasn't going so well, mm -hmm. and suddenly I just stopped and became silent and didn't move like the, like the film had frozen. Mm. And he said it was the longest time him sitting there going, Jim, Jim Carrey's frozen. Is, is it the film? Is it the whatever? What's he going to do? Is he, is he going to do something crazy? Is, and then in the dream, he said, my eyes just started rolling up <laughs> and down <laughs> and back <laughs> and forth like that and down and back and forth like this and to, until the audience was in stitches. And he said... He woke with the idea that this is a tremendous exercise for his eyes mm. <laughs> because he had poor eyesight. So he adopted it as an exercise that he did every single day of his life. He did the Jim Carrey dream eye exercise. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I'm impressed. That's, that's fame. I don't know. It's a little odd, but my ego likes it. <laughs> Next, next image. Ah, uh, oh my favorite. This, this is Mayor Giuliani. So yeah. take it. A guy that doesn't have presence of mind enough to dye the bottom teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's that his mouth is the whole administration <laughs> in a nutshell. <laughs> so fake top teeth that shine like diamonds, and just this rotten, diseased, you know root canal central <laughs> down there it's just eating him from within you know uh, you know tooth tooth decay can cause heart attack and insanity <laughs> i think that explains everything uh, it's interesting yes. to have these two big new york characters that new york has always loathed uh, giuliani and donald trump yeah. so it's very shocking to like have the grossest energy from our... C.S. Lewis said in the screw tape letters, I don't know if anybody's ever read that, but oh. uh, C.S. Lewis said in the screw tape letters uh, in the uh, communication with the demon in hell uh, to his minion on earth who was trying to corrupt a person. And the, the minion on earth said, um, great news, uh, he's enlisted in the army, he's gonna, he's gonna be fighting at the front. And the demon said, you idiot. Don't you know it takes a lifetime to corrupt a human soul? And what does That's, that mean? I've missed what that, it. What that means is we thought he was a good guy right. because he was in the middle of that oh. disaster and right. he did what he's supposed to do. He did. And he was there. It was approximation, you know, a, pro a proximity yeah. thing. And, and, uh, and he turned out not to be such a, yeah. you know, a lovely uh, soul. You know, obviously will do anything he can and say anything he can for power. And it's sickening to me. So 
But we find these people out. Sooner or later, they show themselves. Oh, here's But will we pay attention? I just took a picture of the Houdini star <laughs> right on the corner oh, across yes. the street. It's one right. of my favorites. Uh -huh. And Stan Lee, by the way, uh, did you ever look at Stan Lee's no. work or oh, Mad Stan. Magazine? Of course. I used to go it's into great the, stuff. I used people. to go into the uh, into the variety store in Canada, and I was the kid at the back on the magazine rack trying to fold the secret page together, you know, to see what the, that folded page was, what the what the reveal was, and getting yelled at by the guy behind the counter. And uh, I loved Mad Magazine, and that was a great time, man, when a great movie would come out like Apocalypse Now or something, and Matt right. would have the, the takeoff. It was just fantastic. I, I lived for that. This is a great drawing of this escape artist. Spudini, yes, the great <laughs> Spudini, who spews lies, I mean, you know, 4,000 documented lies in two years doesn't lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, that tells some, a different truth. And uh, you couldn't even write the word lie 4,000 times without getting carpal tunnel syndrome. Amen. So how is he living in that? Mm -hmm. how, how, how does a human soul do that to themselves? You know, just... If I knew that every word coming out of my mouth was inauthentic, what kind of cancer would that cause inside me? Right. You know, and the truth is, it only hurts if you got a conscience. Sociopaths don't feel that. Right. And that's what he is. And would that mean that 30% of our country is in a sociopathic it, No, no. They're pace? good people who are uninformed. And they're, they're right. uninformed and not so good people. There's also... Yeah you know, a lot of hate groups that are being encouraged to violence and encouraged to do their worst. When the head of a state, you know, says evil's okay, guess who rises to the top? Right. You know, all the good people go because they won't put up with it and all that's left is the chafe. You know, the people who are poisonous, the, uh, the army ants. And when uh, we, so uh, I, get, I get sick of the, even the thought that this guy is somehow untouchable and he can go on Fifth Avenue and shoot a gun and no one will ever. It's not true. He is touchable. Right. He is beatable. And all of and you... He will be beat. And he will. Us. Yeah. One more. One more. Because we're better than him. This was good. This was good. Yes. And there was conflict over this. A lot of people were like, you know, have you checked into Nike, man? You know, because the human what? rights abuses oh. and all these things like that. And I, my answer was... I don't know. I didn't research Nike before I supported Colin Kaepernick. Uh, but uh, I've worn the shoes. I still wear the shoes sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what they are. I'm sure, like every large organization, they become corrupt. That's the natural course of things mm -hmm. when you protect assets and want to expand at alarming rates. Uh, you're going to hurt somebody. And uh, I don't know if they're doing that or not. I, I don't know personally. but. Uh, but I wanted to support one act of goodness, you know, uh, to encourage an act of goodness. And, and that's all I was doing with that, is, is encouraging an act of goodness. And, and also, if it's good enough for Colin Kaepernick, it's good enough for me. Amen. You know? Yeah. We have to encourage goodness. That's how we get more goodness. And if I, these companies believe that goodness is a good sales tool, then they're going to do good things. You know, uh, but this is it's in, tough. This drawing is really interesting to me because it exists in three different times, if you look mm -hmm. very carefully at it. Yes. The closest in the foreground is the present, Colin Kaepernick. It's kind of cut off in these uh, right. things, in, so if you want to look in your phone number seven. And then the two figures giving the black power salute are the two Olympic athletes yeah. that, of course, were, like, hated and loved in the 19, late 1960s when yeah. they gave the black uh, yeah. power salute at the Olympics moment. on the first and uh, th second place winners. Yeah, and, and then you it, got Jesse Owens. And Jesse Owens is in the far background, I think in the 1936 Olympics, yes. are held in Berlin, mm -hmm. and a... Uh, there was a big show-off moment for the Aryan race, yeah. and, uh, and he just kicked their ass. And that's what they're afraid of. And Hitler walked <laughs> Busted out. Busted right through that swastika, man. And, uh, and uh, that was a beautiful moment in history. But, you know, it sickens me that we still have to 
be there? How, how, how long have we existed? How long have we existed? We still can't get over each other's fucking skin color? Yeah. Who are we? African American people gave me my career. They gave me my break. They encouraged me and welcomed me, and that's how they are. Yes. The African American community has incredible grace in the face of this, 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 this cancerous hate. They're unbelievable. I, I don't know how they haven't burned this country to the ground. Yeah. I, I seriously don't. Uh, but they, they haven't because they love and they just want to love and they want to show you the fucking shit they have, man, because they have great shit. Yeah. They want to show it <laughs> off. I want to say. And there, there's a bunch of people sitting there going, I don't have that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have that shit? No, I don't have that shit. You know why? Because you didn't fucking grow up in Detroit where there was nothing but what you create. For, hey, for joy. That's right. You know, there's nothing but. That's right. It's, it's, it's we're all it's, sickens me to no end. I know? think everybody shares this. And I, yesterday I went to Michelle Macaron Gallery, and I walked around and I asked, and it's pretty full all the time, and that means you're using your platform the way it should be used or can be used. And I asked the viewers there, I said, do you usually go to galleries? And many of the people went, no. Yeah, and I beautiful. said, what do you think of this work? And I wrote down some of their responses. <laughs> I heard you were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was it cool. took hours yeah. because I couldn't stop. Just I could accosting actually. Accosting people as they came in. <laughs> it was bad. I would have to tell them I'm Jim not. accosting them. <laughs> Brr, boom. First person I asked said, these give me incredible comfort. These show how angry I am. The next person said, it, these drawings are showing the other side, how we see them. We hope they can see our pain. Another person said, these are devastatingly on point about America. And these were people that split in their relationships, husbands and wives, that. He was Republican, she was Democrat. Yeah. He did not vote for Trump, but that's the, he said it shows how disturbing power is when people start abusing it. And he went, all these people went on and on. I didn't, and I found Republicans and they were touched. And I was amazed that they didn't just turn on you. I oh, wish you would good. come on to Instagram where yeah. there's more love. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. I believe that's owned by Facebook. <laughs> it's in your date book? Instagram is owned by Facebook. I will not be on Instagram. Oh, old people don't know these no, things. No, we need to stop these billionaires from destroying our culture. We really do. They have no conscience whatsoever, and uh, what they did uh, in the 2016 election is just unconscionable and should be punished. And uh, I don't think it's enough to go, okay, well, let's regulate them. We need to regulate them, for sure. They've I'm proven good to be, uh, you know, uh, somebody we can't count on. So uh, we, we have to do that. But, but also just the billionaire culture in general. I, I mean, I, I don't want to hate anyone. I don't want to hate on anyone. But you know what? Uh, I'm sorry. I, I could not. I mean, billion... Maybe. I could maybe go there. <laughs> but after that, shouldn't you be working for the country? Yes. Shouldn't you be putting it into the Give country, back. into people that need it, education, things like that? Why can't we take care of ourselves? I mean, if like Elon Musk wants to make a, a rocket ship to Mars, he better make room for the billionaires, man, because if they stick around here much longer this way, their heads are going to be on sticks. And you all are going to help send this to... In 2020, you promise us right now with a hand of applause, and we give you back our love. And thank you, thank you, thank you for staying. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to you. Thank you.